In React, it is possible to pass parameters to components. So these parameters are called props or properties. And there are two types of properties. There are properties of type attributes that we write in the open tag. And there are properties of type content that we add to the content of the component. So in this video, I will show you how to use the two types of properties the attribute properties and the content properties. So now let's create a new component. Let's create it in the components folder. And let's call it container.js. Then let's create a function component and let's export it by default. Let's call it container. And to allow this component to receive parameters, we have to add as a parameter the props object. Then let's return a GSX element. Let's return a div. Then let's add some bootstrap classes. So it is a container. Let's add top and bottom paddings. So in this example, I will provide this component with the content property. So we need to read the children property of this parameter. So just here, let's add brackets, then props, which is the parameter of this component, dot children. Now let's save this file and let's use this component in the index file. So just after the hero component, let's add the container component. Let's press enter to import it. Then let's provide this component with content. So here we can copy these elements and let's paste them just here. So we can keep these elements to make a comparison between the elements that are inside the container component and the elements that are outside of this component. Also, we don't need the hero component, so let's delete it. We can delete this statement as well. Let's save the file. And here we have the content of the container component. And this is the content that is outside of the container component. We can see that the content of the container component is inside a container class of bootstrap because we have some space here and here. And also we have top and bottom paddings. So as I said, the content of the component is called the children props, but it is also possible to use attribute props. So the attribute props are the attributes that we add to the open tag of the component. So now I will show you how to use props of type attributes. So let's create a new component. We can create it in the pages folder because it will correspond to an entire page. So let's create a new folder under source. Let's call it pages. Then let's create a new file. Let's call it productlist.js. Then let's create and export the product list component. Let's return a div. So we can add some bootstrap classes. Let's add the container class. And let's add some bottom and top paddings. Then inside this component, we will display some products. So let's create another component called product item. So we don't need to export the product item component because we will use it in the product list component. Also, this component will be a row with several columns. So here, let's add some bootstrap classes. It is a row. And we can add a bottom border. Then let's create several columns. So this is the first column. Let's add a bootstrap class. So this is the first column with this width. Let's copy it. And let's create three more columns. Let's change the width.
So in the first column, we can display the product details. So here we have the product name and here we have some additional details. So we have the brand category and the unit price. In the second column, we can display the quantity. So let's add a span that contains the quantity. So here we have a span that contains the quantity and we are using a rounded border. We have some margin and some padding. Then in the third column, we can display the total price. So the total price will be the quantity multiplied by the unit price. We can also create a span. And in the last column, let's display a button that allows the user to delete the product. And here we have this delete button. So it is a bootstrap class of type danger. This means that the color is red and it is a small button. Now let's create three product items in product list. So this is the first item. Let's copy it and let's paste it twice. Let's save the file and let's add the product list component to the index page. So we can delete all the components of the app component and we can keep only the nav bar and the footer. So let's delete this till the div. Then let's add the product list component. Let's save the file. And here we have the product list component that contains three product item components. And to improve the appearance a little bit, we can display the content of these columns in the center. So in the div of the product item component, we can add a bootstrap class. It is called a line item center. Let's save the file. And now we can see that the content of these three columns is displayed in the center. Now, instead of displaying static content, we can provide the product item component with parameters to display dynamic content. So to pass parameters to product item, we need to provide it with a parameter called props, which contains the different properties of this component. So in this example, I will show you how to use properties of type attributes. So here, let's display the product name. We can delete this. Let's add brackets. Then let's read the name from the properties. So let's write props dot name. So we need to provide this component with an attribute called name. Then here, let's display the brand. Then props dot brand. Let's do the same thing here. So let's delete this, then props.category. And here we will display the unit price. So let's delete the price. Let's keep the unit. Then props.unit price. So here we will display the quantity. And here we will display the unit price multiplied by the quantity. So let's delete the total price. We can keep the unit. And here let's multiply the unit price by the quantity. Now we need to provide the product item with attributes called name, brand, category, unit price, and quantity. So we can update the components in the product list component. So let's add props of type attributes to the first element. So here we have the name, which is the name that we are displaying here. We have the brand, which is displayed here. We have the category, the unit price and the quantity. So for the unit price, we can see that it is between brackets because it is an integer. And the quantity is also an integer. That's why we display it between brackets. Of course, it is possible to display the unit price and the quantity between double quotes, but in this case, it will be considered as a string. Now let's add attributes to the second and third elements. 
let's save the file and here we can see that we have different content for the different product items so to conclude the parameters that we pass to components are called properties or props and we can pass two types of props the attribute props and the content props so the content props is also called the children props